Welcome to the Sky at Night magazine vodcast, your monthly dose of astronomy on the web. Hello and welcome to the very first Vodcast episode from BBC's Sky at Night magazine. In this month's episode we'll be looking at the Mars Science Laboratory and how it's going to land on Mars, and we'll also get top night sky observing tips from our stargazing expert. Now imagine you're trying to land something the size of a car on a planet that's millions of kilometres away. How would you do it? Well, NASA have been thinking about just such a mission because they're hoping to land a giant rover on Mars in 2012. Called the Mars Science Laboratory, it's one of NASA's most adventurous missions, but getting there is going to be no easy feat. The landing is going to be one of the most dramatic seen in the whole history of planetary exploration. Scientists hope that the Mars Science Laboratory will tell them about the geological history of Mars, what the climate's like, and also whether the conditions for life were ever right on Mars. But it'll also be able to do another thing, and that's give NASA engineers the opportunity to test out different procedures and landing methods for landing a heavy object on the Martian surface. To land the Mars Science Laboratory, the craft will first have to get through the Martian atmosphere. Protected by its heat shield and a protective casing known as an aeroshell, it will hopefully soar through, and a huge 17 metre wide parachute will unfurl, slowing the craft further. Mars Science Laboratory's parachute is the largest of its kind ever made, and you can see it here being tested in the world's largest wind tunnel. But once it's done its job, it won't be needed anymore, and it will be cut away from the rover as it comes through the atmosphere. And then it's time for another intricate contraption to take over, and that's the sky crane, a huge rocket-powered crane which will gently lower the rover into a certain position on the Martian surface. One and a half kilometers from the surface, the sky crane will come to life, firing its rockets to slow the rover down. Around seven meters from the surface, the sky crane will hover before lowering the Mars Science Laboratory beneath it on a strong tether down to the surface. It's at this point that the rover can get on with its science mission, whilst the sky crane throttles up its rockets to crash land safely away from the rover. To find out more about the daring landing, Read the article in the February issue of Sky at Night magazine. And now it's time to find out what to look for in the night sky this month with our stargazing expert, Paul Money. First off this month, M44, or Messier 44, is an open cluster of stars, also known as the Beehive or Precipi Cluster. Open clusters are a loose grouping of stars, numbering from just a few members up to maybe a thousand stars. M44 lies in the constellation of Cancer the Crab. Cancer is quite faint as constellations go, so look between the bright stars of Gemini and down to the lower left towards Leo the Lion with its bright star Regulus. M44 is just visible as a hazy patch to the naked eye under dark clear skies, and it forms an isosceles triangle with two of the central stars of Cancer, Gamma and Delta. Binoculars and small telescopes really bring out the cluster in all its splendour, so why not look it up? Our next object is a comet. Comet Lullin is expected to become a naked eye object during this month. It begins February a binocular object, visible in the early hours, but by the time it passes above the star spiker in Virgo on the 16th, it is rising by 11pm. It rapidly improves and is rising by 8pm, when it lies below the planet Saturn on the late evening of the 23rd. The next day, Comet Lullin passes by the Earth, when it will lie 61 million kilometres away and be at its brightest. Some estimates put it near 5th magnitude, but it could be brighter or even fainter. Finally, we have a naked eye spectacle also on the evening of the 27th. Look towards the western sky around half an hour after sunset. 
you should see the crescent moon lying just below the bright planet Venus. What a stunning sight as they gradually set during the next few hours over in the west. That's all for this month, so clear skies and keep looking up. Now, are you a budding astroimager? Do you love taking pictures of galaxies, nebulae, the planets and the moon? Well, if you are, then you might be interested in the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition, just launched by the Royal Observatory in Greenwich here in the UK. Now, BBC Sky Night magazine is the official media partner for the competition, and we'll be keeping you up to date with all the latest news and information in the magazine and on the vodcast. But here's a quick rundown of the facts. The competition has four categories. Earth and sky for landscape shots containing a celestial object, deep space for pictures of galaxies and nebulae, our solar system for images of planets, comets, the moon and more, and finally young astronomer of the year for entrants under 16 years old. For more about the competition see our article in the February issue of Sky Night magazine and you can find out all the rules of how to enter at the official astronomy photographer of the year website it's at the National Maritime Museum's website, www.nmm.ac.uk forward slash astrophoto. Well, that's about all for this month. Don't forget to pick up a copy of Scar at Night magazine at your local newsagent. This month we're on the search for a second Earth, and we also ask the question, how far can you see? <laughs>